Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you ever so much for tuning in to our Galaxy Comic Con online this year. Um, it gives me a very great pleasure to announce our first special guest. Now, this man has played roles as varied as uh, the friend of wizards in Harry Potter to the person mo uh, voted the most villainous in the galaxy, uh, of course, Darth Vader. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the one and only Mr. Spencer Wilding. How are you doing today? Hello. Spencer? How are you doing? Yeah, all good, all good. How's the weather in Rill? Very cold. It's trying to snow. Can't wait for it to snow, actually. A bit, a bit teasing me because I'm in a bit of a quarantine now for nine days. I've been away doing a bit of filming. So if, if the snow does come down, then all I can do is look at it through the window, I'm afraid. I can't get the sleds out, you know? <laughs> I should imagine you're uh, a bit of a dab hand at snowball fights, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I use the force. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, Spencer, thank you ever so much for sparing your valuable time today. Um, you mentioned you've just got back from some filming. I guess you're probably nda but is there anything you can talk about that? Certainly can't, Fred. Yeah, I expected the case. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about your, your sort of early career, if you like. Now, I, I know that um, you started off life um, as quite a sporting sort of person. You were into kickboxing and, and uh, boxing. Um, tell us a little bit about your, your sort of early life. Yeah, so I'll go from the beginning. Well, I was born uh, in uh, one of the smallest cities in the world called St. Asaph's in North Wales. Uh, and then I moved from there, from the hospital, uh, to, uh, to a small town called Prestatin, very famous for Pontins. Uh, and just up the road, it's got uh, Prestatin Sands. Uh, and then I went for, to a small village called Melodin. And this is all in like a 10-mile uh, circle of each other um, and then I moved into Rill and I spent most most of my years in Rill and travelling the world all over the place. I worked in, uh, well I first went to a farming college, uh, did um, agricultural mechanics, wasn't for me, then I went to NCD National Certificate in Dairying, wasn't for me, so moved on, then I went to a sports college, then I started to feel it a bit more uh, and then I went off to work in um, in Holland, in Rotterdam, when I was age of 22, on construction, uh, and in Paris and around France and places like that. And then I come back from there, around about years of 24, then I started to find the, the world of martial arts kickboxing. Because yeah. I always had the dream to be in the films. Well, it was always in my head. It was one of my dreams to be in the films. But I was a very dyslexic kid. I've said, said this on hundreds of Comic-Cons uh, and Q&As that I couldn't read or write till the age of 32. So I was a very, very late starter. Uh, it's just the way that my brain ticked. Um, uh, and then I, so I got into the kickboxing because uh, a little voice in my head, I called my, my, uh, my fight gods or whatever. I said, I want to be an actor. How am I going to get into this? Well, you're going to be a famous kickboxer, Welsh British champion. You're going to be an undefeated boxer, and then it'll open the doorway for for the films. You know, I thought there's going to be a guy in the audience with a big fat cigar going, "Want to be in a movie?" <laughs> he was there. But when I took the Welsh and British title, I got signed up with a with a sports agency up in London, and then further down the line, I got an acting agent. So, uh, and you know, uh, in right in the beginning, when they when I got signed up with this agency, uh, they sent me for my first audition. But little anybody new in the industry, I couldn't read. You know, to be an actor, and you can't read. It's a, you know, it's one of them, isn't it? So I, I I crashed several auditions, and the phone went quiet for a year. And then I got a phone call off a friend saying, uh, "Hey, Spen, are you still trying to get into into the films? Because mm -hmm. I'm the kid in town that's done good." Uh, and I said, "You know what? I can't read a rhyme properly, man. So I'm going to leave that dream alone." He goes, no, uh, there's, a, there's a guy on Radio 1, uh, the, the, the new, you know, the radio channel, that they're looking for a very, very tall actor to play uh, the werewolf in the Prison of Azkaban. Why don't you get onto your agent onto it? Because it was a closed audition. It wasn't an open audition. So they would only deal with a professional actor with an agency. So um, I rang them up and I said, blah, blah, blah. And they said, right, we'll get back to you. They rang me back two minutes later and said, listen, we've got the audition. You've got to go to uh, Leveson Studios, which is the Harry Potter world now. You've got to get there in the morning. Can you make it? I said, yeah, I'll be there. And as soon as I got to this audition, it was, it was, it was an amazing feeling. It felt like I'd got, I found my way back. Yeah. And I'm well, I, I had a welcome back into the world, you know. I've been on my travels somewhere. 
So, and I had uh, three callbacks off that over three weeks. And then we got the part, me, myself, my, my van der Brook played uh, the werewolf in the Prince of Azkaban. And that. then and that was in 2002, 2003. And I've been busy, busy ever since until the plague hit, got a bit quiet for a year. <laughs> but oh, it's coming back slowly, you know, as, as long as we all do our, do as we're told, wear your masks, keep your distance. That's have your injection, and we all we'll be all good, and we roll again soon. Well, uh, hopefully, yeah, uh, hopefully the world will sort of uh, come back to what it uh, should be doing, rotating the right direction before too too long. Um, you mentioned obviously Harry Potter, and that was your your sort of big break, I guess, into uh, into acting. Um, yeah. But you've also had roles in numerous other films. Um, I've got just notes here of Jupiter Ascending, Green Lantern, Game of, Game of Thrones. You were a White Walker in the Game of Thrones um, fr uh, franchise. Peter Pan. You've been in Pan. Uh, Frankenstein with James McAvoy, I believe. Um, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your your role in Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. Well, I, I presume a lot of you viewers have seen Guardians of the Galaxy. The original character I was I was auditioning for. Do you remember the scene where the guy goes, "Take her down to the showers, so it'll be easier to clean up the blood down there." Right, that was the original character I was going to go for. But then they changed it and said, no, we want you to go for the mean guard, the blue guard. Uh, there's no dialogue. It would be a bit, a bit, probably a bit, you know, a bit grunting or something, you know. Uh, and so when I got, because like I say, I couldn't read or write too good back then. So I was all I used to do it with comics is look at the pictures. I didn't read them, you know. So I didn't really know much about Guardians of the Galaxy. So when I got that role, you know, playing the mean guard uh, and stealing uh, uh, Star-Lord's Walkman, and then uh, he comes back and takes it back off for of me, you know. And I did a little scene dancing in the prison that, that, uh, that got cut out of the film, but put in the, the Blu-ray special features where you see the mean god. If you haven't seen it, it's a great little scene. Have a little watch of that. So when I went to the premiere with my mum, and I said to my mum, I said, oh, mum, it's only a minute scene. It's only a minute scene. It's, and she goes, it's all right, son. You're in another film. It's okay, great, great. So we went to the pictures and we watched it. And the opening scene obviously touched everybody you know, his mum was dying in the big C. And, and as soon as I seen that in the walk, when I went I straight to him, my mum said, no, it's going to be a really good scene. Because I, I just clicked straight away. There's the walk, there's the walkman, you know. So I knew I had, you know, a strong part of the film, you know. Uh, so that was the mean guard. And, and they love, all the, the fans love the mean guard from, from Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a, it's a quick scene, but it's a powerful scene. And they, some people say it's, a, it's, the, it's the best scene in the film. And I, 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 I see the whole film as a great, not just one scene. But, you know, it's, it's thank you for the compliment, you know, it's one of them. So, so what's it like, you know, as you say, taking your mum to, um, to watch the film? It must be an incredibly proud uh, moment for you doing something like that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's brilliant, you know, because I've done like almost 50 shows now. You know, I've, and I've done some really iconic characters, mm. you know, my character. Famous, more famous than me, but my characters are, are well known out there. But um, Spencer Wyman's getting there slowly. But, yeah, it's an incredible feeling. You know, I'm living my dream, and I thank the, I thank the, 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 uh, my film gods, and I say my prayers every day. Do you know what I mean? Thank you very much for letting me live these dreams. Well, uh, that's brilliant to hear because you know you you see as you as you said you've come from a background where you had difficulty reading and writing. Um, mm. But um, that's something, obviously, in, in later life and as an adult, you've um, challenged yourself and, and uh, obviously learned and improved or whatever else. Um, one, one thing that I, I do understand about you, Spencer, is you do have an awful lot of time for sort of kids and families and whatever else, and especially fans at Comic-Cons. Um, is, is that something that's dear to your heart? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm a protector over children. You know, I'm, I'm the painter of anti-bullying back home in Wales. Uh, I, I try and train as the kids when I can, you know, uh, especially the ones with the, the ones of, you know, not had a, too much light in their life. You know, lived in dark worlds, you know, and the heavy dyslexic kids because there's a there's a little spencer in there somewhere, you know, and if I can help them, I always encourage the kids to do sports, you know, boxing or kickboxing or, you know, karate or whatever they need to do, because it will it will help them, especially if they're getting bullied, because a bully does not like a competent kid. A yeah. bully will only pet the kid, uh, a pick on a kid. That, 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 that there's some cracks there, you know. So, uh, and you know, I've been bullied, you know, but I fought my way out of it, uh, and they don't bully me anymore. And uh, like I say, I'm a bit of a pie piper with the kids. I look after them. You know what I mean? 
Now, talking of Pied Piper, that, that brings me on to a, a, a humorous little story that I don't know if it's true because it almost sounds too fantastic to be true. Um, talking of Pied Piper, I understand when you were young, you had a visiting circus or a zoo come to town. And there's a particular, <laughs> particular story, perhaps you might want to uh, regale us with your uh, little story about your visiting zoo. Yeah, you've, you've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, when I was living in Prestatin, I was only about five or six, yeah, in, uh, in Bastion Gardens. And every summer, in the summertime, around about July time, something like that, we had Bastion Fields. And this field is probably about 20 acres. It's a big field. And uh, back in the day, they used to have a lot more animals in the zoos, you know. Uh, not so much now, which is great, because I don't think animals should be in zoos, you know. It's all of them. It's cruel. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, so I... Back then, animals could talk to me, and I used to understand animals when I was a little kid, in my head, you know? So I walked onto the field, and there was a big camel, right? A big camel, and he was apparently a nasty camel, didn't like anybody, and he had a big steel foot peg to keep him grazed. They grazed the elephants, they grazed the camels, the, 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 the horses, the zebras, whatever. So I walked up to this camel, and this camel said to me, I want to come home with you. I said, all right, Ed come home with me so it took me about an hour to get this peg out the ground right but you know this camel was nasty with everybody he had two big humps and he spit everybody but he loved me and i got the peg out and i got him halfway home <laughs> and i was walking down the street with him and all the circus people come running after me you know because i got i just wanted to take him home with me i was one of them kids that used to bring all sorts of things my mum used to say I, I, mum and they go and they go whatever it is we don't want it put it back in there put it back in the bush or put it back in there I remember once I took an old, old, an old a little old lady who, who walked out of the nursing home. <laughs> I brought her home with me. I said, can, we, can, she, can she live with us? She says, no, no, whatever it is, put it back. She came out. It was a, it was a, it was a grandma of a gra grandma, grandma of some of our friends' families. Oh my God, take her back to the car home. <laughs> so I used to go there and peel potatoes for them and all sorts of things when I was a kid. And I used to take red, red hot pokers, you know, flowers. You know, it was a wee, but I used to take them to the old people all the time. I was just one of them kids, man. You know what I mean, <laughs> um, when you were when you were growing up, um, what sort of films did you like to watch, or were you sort of more of an outdoorsy kind of person? Or I was outdoor. I was. I used to as soon as it was light, I was straight out. You know what I mean, but I did love films like uh, Wizard of Oz, one of my favourite films. You know, I used to love watching M Monkey Magic, and um, sometimes I'd sneak downstairs and look through the crack of the door. I watched The Equaliser. The Edward Woodward. I used to be geeky like that, do you know what I mean? And uh, whatever my mum's mood was in, sometimes she'd let me watch it, sometimes she wouldn't, because it was on it quite quite like quite late at night, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I was one of them kids. And when my mates would go and watch football, I'd go and climb a tree or look for animals. Do you know what I mean? That's what I was, one of them kids. When you um, when you sort of started getting into, uh, after you became British <laughs> champion, um, and you then got signed on with an agency. Did you actually sort of get any formal training as an actor? I know a lot of your roles involve sort of wearing prosthetics and perhaps not speaking roles as such, um, but did you sort of go through any sort of act, acting training at all? Well, no. Well, my, my acting agency, um, Morello Cherry, uh, when we'd have cell tapes, they'd bring me in a day before because they, they had a, a workshop there as well, acting workshops, and they just they spend a lot of time with their actors that way, and we just that was my sort of acting training to... You know, we'd go again, go again, go again, get it nice and right for the cell tapes, you know. Uh, so I'd have help that way. But my acting school has been life, you know. Uh, like I say, because I'm a heavy dyslexic, what was what was teaching me to read was the scripts, you know, and just doing it and doing it and doing it and finding little tricks, how to remember words. So I'm getting, a, I'm in a better place now with the dialogue. It's like these bigger roles are coming to me now because the industry's waiting for me to get into that space, to offer me them roles, you know? So things are coming together nice now. I'm loving it. And when, when these creatures, when I play these aliens and Wolfman and Frankensteins, all them, I I bring them alive, you know? I really bring them alive because I step out and the spirit and presence comes in. So they're like, oh, what's he doing? Get the camera going, you know what I mean? So it's like that, you know, there's a, like, there's a real... When I landed Vader, Darth Vader, I questioned, I questioned to myself, is there a real presence and spirit of Darth Vader? This would be interesting. So when he took over my body, I could literally choke people out and use the force. An incredible feeling when the Vader takes over your body. is amazing. I understand now. Because I was thinking, 
I don't think he's the most iconic bad boy in the silver screen. But when I played the character, I got it. You know, me and Dan played the character, and I'm sure he feels the same same way with the character as well. Yeah. He's got a presence, and he has got a presence. You've obviously spoken a lot about your um, your your passion for looking after kids and anti bullying. You mentioned you know you're an ambassador for that. Um, are, are you a family man yourself? Do you, have you got? I, 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 have, I have three children. I, I've got Bobby Joe Wilding, who's uh, nearly 16. He's just getting into his rapping at the moment. And I've got uh, George George Wilding, who's 20 in uh, in, in June. Um, my daughter's uh, 27, 28. She'll kill me. Getting a generation. <laughs> uh, she's a massive geek. She writes. She, she's amazing. She she does a lot for um, um, mental health. She's the she's the mermaid of way Mrs. Mermaid. She makes all the costumes, Tyler Turner. She uh, lives in the small town just past us. Um, so, yeah, I've got beautiful children. Uh, okay. I let them help with the, the, They've got their own path. They do what they want to do. And if I'm around to support them in any way, they, they'll ask me, you know. Uh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So you, you're obviously now becoming, as you said, more recognised, not, you know, not as playing necessarily the roles of uh, a character covered in makeup or in a, in a costume, but also as, as yourself. Um, are, are you sort of now finding yourself on the Comic Con circuit more often? No, you, you mentioned that you've been to quite a few. Well, I the first Comic Con I ever did was in uh, was in Philadelphia, Monster Mania, in two thousand and eleven. So I've been on the circuit a long time. But you know, when I landed Vader, I was in America a lot more and things like that. You know, um, but I love I geek out as much as the the uh, the fans geek out on me. I love to meet them. Yeah. I love to see their cosplays. I love to see their passion. You know, these these guys will may work on that costume. They haven't got a budget of a film to make a costume. They'll make that costume. They might have been working on that all year for their moment. Do you know what I mean? And I love that. I'm very I'm very passionate how how they're very passionate. If that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. You 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 obviously come across as extremely down to earth, shall we say? And and you know you, um, you don't have any sort of uh, aloof characteristics that perhaps. You could aim at some other actors, but we won't sort of talk about that. Um, what was it like the first time um, you got to put on some proper sort of prosthetics and play the role of a, a character? How, how long were you in the chair for your first time um, with the prosthetics? Well, if, like like I said, with with with, a, with the, the costume with the werewolf, because obviously that's ninety nine percent CGI. You couldn't see or breathe or hardly move in that suit, so you were there for really reference, you know. <coughs> And sometimes, you know, like the, when, when the werewolf and uh, the dog fight each other, you know, we're, me and me and uh, Mark Lisbon are in a uh, stunt guy. He, we're in we're in blue suits with motion, you know, with with blue screen. Yeah. We're doing all that stuff. But with the, the actual suit, you'll see it in the in the Harry Potter museum. You'll see the werewolf suit, and I was actually inside that thing. Do you know what I mean? And so it was Mark. Mark, it's not the same time. You know what I mean? Because Mark, will do some scenes. I'll do some scenes. You know, but, and that was the the first experience of the creature world, should I say? And then uh, the big makeup after that was uh, I, I did Beowulf and Grendel with Gerald Butler over in Iceland, and I played Grendel's father. And this is for the Nick Dudman creature department. Uh, you know, some of the best in the world. And um, we filmed that in Iceland, and and then I doubled Agrid, uh, not Agrid. I doubled uh, uh, the Sea Hag. Uh, you see the sea hag, she was obviously Grendel's mother and uh, she was very upset in that film because uh, the geeks had killed her son, you know. Um, and that was that was a, like a five or six hour makeup, you know. Uh, we had the one suit. I remember the cooler room, the drying room went down on the first day. So we're putting a soggy suit on for six weeks every day. That was uh, interesting. But, you know, it's one of them. I'm a fighter. I can deal with it. Um, and then we did um, whatever big makeups from there. The Wolfman again, again a big makeup, you know. And I did, did, did the the living legend Rick Baker, Dave Elsie, and 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 Goran, and some other makeup artists um, work on me, you know. So it was a, it, it was a privilege for me to be uh, sat in there in their makeup chair five six hours a day. These are the best of the people in the world in the business, you know. What I mean, and then and then have wardrobe for an hour. So the, I've I've experienced a lot of makeups, you know, and and I've wear a lot of uh, suits with animatronic heads, you know. 
Doctor Who's and, and other, other shows. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great... I enjoy it. Some people, some actors freaks them out, can't deal with it. I'm one of them actors that find great. I'll sit in that mic, makeup chair and I'll fall asleep. And if they want an expression out of me, they'll poke me in the face and wake me up. You know what I mean? It's one of them. <laughs> if you could, um, if you had the sort of your, your dream phone call, okay? If, uh, if your agent phoned you up tomorrow and said, Spencer, I've got you a starring role on what franchise would you choose? What would be your, your absolute uh, favourite ever franchise to work on? Well, you know what? I've, I've ticked off a lot of boxes now. You know what I mean? So I'm, and lately, I've Dracula has been in my head a lot lately, and I'd love to play Dracula. That'd be a core cool character to play. Mm. You know, I nearly played um, um, uh, the the Hulk. I nearly played him once, but they they ended up seeing CGI in it, and they they used a stunt performer in the suit instead. Um, well, the stunt performers are awesome. They're, they're better than most actors out there, and they've got they've got the whole package. You know what I mean? But they know I can move, so I've worked with the stunt world a few several times. Um, so I'm a big guy, I can move well. So they, they, they have, they trust me, you know. Um, they have confidence in me. So uh, yeah, I think, you know, and a, a mummy film, something like that would be great. But there again, I'd like to play in a film like, something like Heat with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. That'd yep. be cool, you know. Because I've worked with Mr. Mr. De Niro on Stardust. I was one of his main pirates. That was, that was awesome. And to chill with Mr. De Niro is brilliant, Bob. Um, <laughs> but... That, I don't know if that opportunity is ever going to come now. Then boys are, you know, they, they, you know, they're, they're well into their career now, and I don't know if we're going to get that opportunity to work together again. But something like that would be pretty cool. So you're obviously a very, very busy man. Um, when you get a little bit of spare time, what, what do you like to do with your spare time? Um, I like to chill with boys, do some stuff with my kids, and uh, I do. I like to do a lot of training. I go on the beach. We run on the sand dunes. I like to train people, especially the kids. Uh, sometimes people will ring me up and say, my kids having a bit of a hard time, could you look after them? And I will look after them and I'll turn their world around for them. Right. You know what I mean? I get a buzz off that, you know? Uh, I don't want them to beat people up, but I want them to be able to protect themselves. You know what I mean? Excellent. Um, so um, you obviously mentioned uh, a little earlier that you've just recently come back from some filming. Um, how's work been through the pandemic for you? Have it I, I've worked for over 13 months. You know, that's a massive gap for me because yeah. obviously I'm a, you know, I'm a six foot eight actor. You know, I, I'm not going to get work every day. You know, I'm a specialised actor in certain worlds. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the phone's going again. So thank, thank God it's starting to ring again, you know, because I've been pretty nervous. And obviously then you start getting insecure and paranoid. that <gasps> Have I done something in the industry or don't they like my work anymore? Blah, 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 blah. But it's not. Everybody's in the same boat. You know, mm -hmm. every job out there is suffered one way or the other. Do you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, it's one of them, you know. It's all good. It's starting to come back again. If everybody, everybody sticks to the rules uh, and, and starve this plague out, then, you know, I think we've got a, we've got some light at the end of the tunnel. So, Spencer, you've obviously talked about uh, some of the roles that um, you, you've played. And uh, I know Doctor Who, you, um, you've um, been in Doctor Who a number of times. Is that right? That's right, yeah. My first ever role was playing the Minotaur in uh, the... Go uh, in, uh, the God Complex, if you had faith, I could kill you. Um, with David William, Williams was on there mm. and the other actors as well. So it was great to work with them guys. Mm. Uh, I remember Millennium calling me up and saying, um, you know, we've got, a, we've got a, a role here for Doctor Who. Would you love to be in Doctor Who? I said, yeah. You know, I, mean, I was a fan of Doctor Who back in the day with Mr. Baker and stuff. I used to be hiding behind the couch, you know, with a cushion. Pr prop scary when you're five, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, so we played... Um, I played the Minotaur, and then I played the Wooden King on the Christmas Day special. This is all Matt Smith era, you know? And then I played um, uh, Skeldek, you know? I was the first, uh, the, 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 the Ice Warrior that came back after 40 years from in the Doctor Who, because it was the, what's his name now, the very tall actor that played him first from the Carry On films. Big tall guy, black hair. It's gone out of my head, the name. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure some fans shouting at the screen right now. No doubt. So... Yeah, and then the latest character I played for, for Doctor Who was the Dregs, yeah? Um, and then we filmed that in Tenerife and in the UK. And the Dregs basically were uh, the human race after the human race have died, you know what I mean? So with, uh, with uh, the global warming and stuff like that, the, the, the Dregs would breathe in carbon dioxide, blow out oxygen, 
you know, mm -hmm. like trees, yeah? yeah. And and I was the main um, dreg, and they had two uh, special extras, um, two in Spain, two in the UK, and they allowed me, the, the, the BBC Doctor Who world allowed me to train them, and they gave me the credit. So I've had the first credit as movement as well, movement coordinator. So I was, it's a big thing for me. The, yeah. the, the, the recognizing my my uh, my skills is in teaching other people as well movement, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. Um, also, talking of TV series, um, probably one of your biggest roles, I guess, is in HBO's Game of Thrones, which uh, which obviously was was massive and a complete worldwide sensation. Um, and you played uh, the character of one of the uh, White Walkers, I, I believe. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah, it was yeah when I got a call of. Uh, of uh, one of the guys in the creature, creature department. And they said, there's a show coming up, it's called Game of Thrones. Um, you know, we want you to play one of the White Walkers. Would that be cool? I, I knew nothing about it. I've never read the books. So yeah, let's go, let's do it. And that was, we were filming that in Telemore in, uh, in Ireland. And it was in the like the summertime and it was in the forests in Telemore. Uh, I think it was North Belfast, somewhere like that. And it was, it was great because it was the whole set was outside on location in in the forests and they had white paper on the floor that looked like snow. Um, some of my characters, sometimes they show off, you know, and myself, Ian White was a White Walker one. Ian White plays a predator and I was White Walker two. They were, they were just the characters names. Yeah. I wasn't doubling anybody. It was just, they were the characters name. He was like White Walker one, I was White Walker two. And then they had some uh, background extras, like White Walkers. And there was a specific scene when you first see the White Walkers in the first series, the camera's tracking at the side of us and I'm running and the other guys have got their, their ice swords in front of us, yeah? And uh, the White Walkers, uh, they've run in and I thought, I know, I like to turn my round and have it behind me so it looks more cool. So I'm running like that, I'm running about 10, 15 miles an hour. And the, 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 the forest floor, it was just, it, it might have been the odd twig sticking up here and there, you know, the odd branch underneath the snow. And I jumped over this little stream that was about six foot across. So I thought the camera's going to get me in the air. So I put a good pose on for the camera profile shot and I land it and keep on going. So I was showing off a little bit, Ricardo, right? So I jumped over this stream, landed on a branch because we were in like slippers. Give it, ah! Fell back down in the stream backwards come up with a frog on the head sort of thing, looking like that, you know, so I stopped showing off. So that was that. But that, that was that was brilliant because yeah, I didn't nobody knew I was how big the Game of Thrones was going to be back in the day when it first started. But it, yeah, it was an honour to be a, to play the character for them. Uh, they did ask me to come back uh, uh, for the second series to play one of the White Walkers again. Uh, Ross Mullen got that job uh, because I was filming in... Um, in, on the Jupiter Ascendants with the, for the, with the, with the Chowskis, the awesome directors. Uh, so, it, but I like to play a character and move on anyway. You know, I like to experience and feel every presence that's out there that's going to take over me, you know? I call them my friends. So, uh, yeah, it's great. But yeah, and, uh, and you know, what other things have we done there, like what you haven't mentioned? Yeah, Victor Frankenstein. Yes. I, I played the strongman in the circus, right? Uh, so we open it up. Uh, I'm, I'm chasing me. Uh, we're chasing uh, James McAvoy down and Daniel Radcliffe, and then they disappear into the circus floor. Yeah, for this trapdoor. They, the, the production asked me, "Can you grow a beard?" And I said, "You know what? I've never gone past a week. Never, never really tried." So <laughs> after like three weeks, it felt like I was giving birth on my face. Uh, anybody with a beard, I'm salute. I salute you. I salute you. It was like incredible. Like. It's a painful, uh, you know, <laughs> experience. So when I got to like the fourth month, I had a good thick beard on me. And then, then they shaped it because uh, obviously Nathaniel, who's the early uh, Victorian circus strongman running around in his leotard, you know, he had a big strongman tash. Oh, yeah. So they shaped it to the strongman tash. And I was always doing this, you know. I was, I was in it. I had this big tash for like a few months. And I was walking past people because I had to keep it when we come home for breaks for a, a few weeks and go back shooting again. I had to walk around in town with this big moustache because they couldn't cut it off. You know what I mean? It wasn't glued on. So I was walking past people in the street and I went, Oi! And I went, What the hell, Spen? What are you doing? Oh, I didn't recognize me, moustache. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. Oh, you know, 
<laughs> it was crazy. And then I played... Um, because when I got that film, sometimes I get little little signs that I'm going to be playing a character. If I let's say if I went for the Wolfman, I had a feeling I was going to play the Wolfman, you know? Victor Frankenstein. I knew I was going to play Frankenstein one day, a monster. I'm thinking, you know, I just have a feeling. So when I had, um, I knew I was going to play in a Frankenstein monster film once, years before, then I got the opportunity to go and audition for in Frankenstein. But it was to play the strong man. I'm thinking, oh, that's strange. I thought I was going to play the monster. You know, but anyway, hey, oh, it must have been because I'm in a Frankenstein film. Great. I remember that I was going home on the Friday and the, the, the first AD rang me up on the Sunday and said, I spent, um, what it is, I stopped him straight away. He said, you want me to play Frankenstein, don't you? And he goes, now, how the hell do you wow. know that? I'm on the third step coming out of production office. How do you know that? Yeah. So I, did, I had a feeling because he, cause it was so vigorous, that role, because two of us play him. You know, me and this French dude, he's got an amazing feature. And, uh, but it was just too much work for him. So they had to get, you know, they said, would you play him as well? I said, yeah, but I'll have a shared credit. Yeah, for sure. So we both, we both play that, that character. So I've got two credits on a Warner Brother film and, and, and it's unheard of for an actor after two different credits. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, another, another lucky day. So would you say that um, acting now, obviously, it's something that has not only affected your life, but your family's life and those of your, your friends around you. Do, do you think it's changed your life? Yeah, it, well, it, you know what? I've always sort of had these feelings that I'm going to be in this world, you know? It's like like with the kickbox in the box, and I knew I was going to be a champion. It's something I'm a bit spiritual. I'm a bit connected to stuff. I, know, I have feelings, you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's changed my life for sure. You know, it's... People know the name Spencer Wilder now, and it's shouted out the family more. And I'm in a position to help people. I'm not selfish with my, with my, my with my gift as such. I'll help people, you know, when I can. You know, otherwise, if you help too many people, it completely takes over your life, and you've got nothing left for yourself. So I, I, I will share it out when I can. You know, <laughs> and I'm the first one in the, in in my family to work in the films. You know, I've got a very famous family for boxing. You know, my uncle Carl Gizzy. Went the distance with Joe Bugner, fought Jack Bandell, mm. sparred with Muhammad Ali. He was the Welsh professional heavyweight boxer. My uncle B Billy Gizzy, uh, my uncle Ronnie Gizzy, they were ABA champions, you know. And my, my, I've got cousins like my, my cousin Jason. He was a uh, he was he was a professional football player. Uh, um, we've got nephews and cousins who are professional dancers, and you know we were very. Uh, good family when it comes down to sports as well. My sister was a very famous uh, makeup artist, Samantha Phillips. My brother is a very famous musician. He was with The Fall. So have you ever heard of The Fall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my brother was the most prestigious member of the band. And he was with them, with, with, and he was best man at Marky Smith's uh, wedding. You know, Matt, God rest his soul, he's, he's passed away now, uh, Mark Smith. Um, <clears throat> my dad was in the Jets. He was a Neil Diamond specialist. You know, we've all sort of got going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if if um if acting hadn't come along and you hadn't got your big breaks and you know and, and fortunately you're still obviously working, where where do you think uh, you would be? What would what would your career have taken you to? Maybe once well, boxing and kickboxing had finished. Yeah, I I think because um, I was a Welsh British uh, a European kickboxer, a Commonwealth kickboxing champion, but I beat the world champion, I beat the Commonwealth, beat the beat the European, I beat them all out there. They took a breath when I left. Then I went to the pro boxing. But I fought Southern Area Champions and I, I did them in, you know, I beat, beat them all up. And then, but it was, there was, I just, I had to come off the contract. Then when the end of the contract, I went back to the kickboxing because I wasn't getting enough fights that I wanted to. And, and I was a very late start. I was 29, 30 years old going into the pro boxing, which was quite late. Yeah. But I think if I had, if my, if my, my movie dream hadn't took me off, maybe I would have got, Maybe a British title, maybe in the, pro, in the boxing, pro boxing, you never know. So, Spencer, um, apart from your sort of film acting career, have you done any work in other sort of media at all, like uh, video games, for example? Yeah, I, I've actually, yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, not, not too uh, recent ago, actually. Um, the first video game uh, I worked on was uh, when I was phys actually physically there, because I've, I've, I've seen my face put on characters before now but the it was it was for shadow of war friend or foe which is lord right. of the ring right uh so there's a lot of gamers out there will know this game and if you go on to uh like youtube and put shadow of war friend or foe you'll see uh the we did the advert for it in ukraine 
right? Yeah. And it was minus 26, right? The, the pen temperature was minus 26. They had four actors playing um, the orcs and then the rest were extras. And all the other guys were in bear suits, lots of, lots of skins to keep them warm. My character, the orc, had painted blue skin, right? <laughs> We're working on the blue. I'm uh, working on the, uh, the 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 black sea. Is it? Well, there's a big the sea over there, uh, and that was ten foot thick of ice, oh, minus twenty six. And I was out there for twelve hours, thirteen hours a day. That was like, it took me about a month to get my heater working again. You know what I mean? I had ten girls around me with the the, the, the girls on the production with air dryers to kind of keep me warm. You know what I mean? They weren't doing anything. And then we went into the studios. Uh, although we were in the studios, he still had to keep the get the doors open to get the condensation coming out of your mouth. And mm-hmm. that was still on my head. But I wouldn't change it for the world. wouldn't change the world. It was a gr- brilliant character. Um, uh, he was like a, a character, if you watch the trailer, and the Luke's the one where he's cutting the head off, and he goes, face me, talk! You know what I mean? Things like that. And he's talking uh, like that, pretty fierce. Don't leave me here! Face me, talk! Save me, master! The ranger wants to play, does he? Uh, and then, after that, played two very famous characters in the Harry Potter Wizards Unite game. I played Death Eater and Greyback. Oh. Again, so they're really, really cool. You'll see, you'll find some pictures there now because that's been out for a short time. We filmed that in uh, in Lisbon, in in where was it? No, no. Where did he film that now? Yeah, no, it was in Portugal. We filmed it in Lisbon. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. You've obviously been just come back from working on something you can't talk about, but have you got anything coming up that you are that you can tell us about? Yeah, well, I I was filming in Prague a year and a half ago, uh, nearly two years ago. Uh, on a horror called Devil. Okay. It was supposed to come out round Valent- uh, Valentine's, round uh, um, uh, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, round about then. But because of obviously the COVID-19 and things like that, it's put the production back. Uh, so I think maybe it might come out this year, fingers crossed. But I think it's going to be a bit of a cult film. I think it's going to be great. You know, if you like your horror, you're going to like this. So uh, that's all I can tell you about it. My character's called HDC, Horrific Demon Creature. <laughs> so it's going to be a good one. Ah, okay. And uh, have you still got sort of roles that uh, that are coming up or the auditioning or you've done any tests for? I, I, yeah, I've got some several things that I can't talk about, but the phone calls are starting to come in a bit now, which are, you know, some auditions. So uh, exciting times. The ride hasn't stopped. I'm still strapped in. So uh, they still want to see my work, which is, which is brilliant. I'm, uh, I thank Thank the Emperor every day. Okay, so Spencer, before we let you go, um, obviously, massive thank you for taking part in this interview today. Um, how do uh, how do people sort of manage to follow you on so you know all the different social medias and things? Uh, give us a little bit about your your social presence. Right. Well, I've got my little blue tick on uh, Twitter uh, at Big Spen Wilding. You can follow me there if you want, if you want to follow my journey. Uh, thank you very much if you do choose to follow me most most, 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 most uh, grateful uh, on Instagram it's at Spencer Wilding and I've got a little shop set up there shot up, a sh- little shop set up there as well if, if uh, while there's quiet times going on with the Comic Con if you want to purchase a picture it's uh, uh, Spencer Wilding Merchandise on Instagram yeah so if you're not on Instagram it's free to go on Instagram just jump on there you can order a, order a picture uh, and what I do I charge it for, for a small price and each one gets its own personal video as well. So it's nice and cheap. Amazing. Well, we'll put, we'll put links to all that sort of stuff um, on the, uh, on the video below so people can go and uh, follow you just by uh, reading off those. Uh, I can't wait to come over to Jersey. Never been to Jersey, but I always like to give a little message to the kids out there. Kids, follow your dreams. And if you've got a mad dream like me doing the, in the movies, you must do good in school. Right. So try and get as many qualifications as you can, because this will feed your dreams to be in the films because you can't rely on mum and dad. Yeah. You've got to do it yourself. Right. You've got to get the life skills and eat your sprouts. Be careful crossing the road and rest in peace, Mr. Dave Prowse. We loved you. Uh, You're awesome. 
and and it's awesome to fill your boots and may the force be with you. <laughs>